Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. It's July 21st. It's Thursday morning. We're out and about. This morning's topic, I want to thank Cafe Latte. One of my subscribers left a comment below, and I thought this would be a great time to cover tip baiting. Now, tip baiting, a lot of my subscribers are active drivers. Some are thinking about driving. Some are waiting to start driving. So everybody's level here of interest is a little bit different. But I want to cover tip baiting because a lot of drivers right now are, nobody knows what to do when you get tip baited. And what is tip baiting? So tip baiting with Walmart grocery, little quick history. When Walmart started out, they used to not show us the tips, okay? They would just say, here's an order. It's a two stack order. It's going three and a half miles and the payout is $14. And you would do the delivery and hopefully there was a tip in the background. And a lot of drivers complain saying, well, I'm not gonna take orders unless I know if I'm gonna make money or not, I, you know? So Walmart came up with an idea and they said, we're gonna show you the tips. But with a caveat that customers could remove their tips up to 24 hours after the delivery. So if something's wrong with the delivery and your driver didn't meet the standards that we require as a Walmart driver, you can remove that tip. You'll still pay the fee for the delivery, but you won't have to pay the tip. So what has been going on specifically lately is we, Walmart has started a program called Walmart Plus. With Walmart Plus, they pay be Sometimes it's free, it's inclusive in their credit card uh, statements. I met a gentleman yesterday that has like the Chase Gold Card or whatever, and they include Walmart Plus. So he gets free deliveries and he didn't tip. And I asked him like when I dropped it off, I was like, so are you in the Walmart Plus program? And he's like, yeah, my credit card gives it to me for free. So when people hear free, they don't tip. All right, they think that everything's inclusive because it's free. <laughs> I'm all a little bit busy uh, thoroughfare near the Walmart, so there might be cars rolling by occasionally. But let's go over the email or the, the comment below real quick. It says, until you tell you the tip baiting is getting very bad at Spark. Does not matter if you work in a good or bad area. There are people that are use the we'll just we'll just throw it out there there are assholes out there that will do this i lost track of how much money i've lost i am now looking for good base paying jobs based on the miles many who don't tip they will raise the base pay so if that walmart does if they cannot get people to take orders they will bump up the base pay right so he's saying that he looks at the mileage and he kind of weighs it out. And that's how he's kind of dealing with tip baiting. So we kind of understand the psychology of customers on whether they want to give a tip. And, and, and sometimes, you know, it's like this. If you've used DoorDash, Grubhub, Walmart, Spark Delivery, all these apps, our standards have changed in, in specifically in the last 12 months. Okay, so when the pandemic started, everybody was just so freaking happy to get groceries brought to their house, right? Just put it in my garage, don't touch it. You know, I'm gonna spray it with pest <laughs> uh, disinfectants. We're gonna leave it in the garage for two days. Then we're gonna eat our food and blah, blah, blah. When the pandemic started, everybody was freaked out. Spark was getting, Spark was very lucrative when the pandemic first started. It was baller money because people were just so happy that somebody was bringing them groceries and they didn't have to go interact and they understood. And you were, you know, an essential worker as a delivery driver, right? Now, people don't perceive you as an essential worker. They see you as somebody that's delivering their groceries, which is their right and they're paying for this and Walmart should be paying you money and that's not their problem. They're not gonna tip. Or if they tip, they have a set standard now that they expect from their deliveries. You know, before it was just, just give me my food. I need to eat. I don't care. <laughs> but now they want, you know, 
Was there a bag torn? Oh, this bag's torn. This box is torn. Not Maybe not at no fault of your own. Maybe the associates, when they loaded it, something was broken, right? Some eggs were broken or whatever. And you delivered it because once you got to the destination, you didn't go through everything and double check everything and didn't do your quality assessment, right, on your loads. So the customer says, 3-0. The, the, or maybe he did a good job, but it wasn't fantastic. You know, some of the groceries tipped over on the step or, you know, little things, the small details, right? Some people are very picky. So your customer rating gets down and tips, you know, it's that debate between what do they expect for service and do they expect to have to even pay? Now, I've also met people and I know people that they look at tips like like when I do a Uber ride, right? There's people all the time say, hey, I'll, I'll get you in the app. I'll, I'll get your tip in the app. And then when they get out, they laugh about it. Because why? They feel like they've been gouged on this ride already. They feel like they're, they're paying way too much for this service already. So I'm just going to tell this guy, I'll give him a tip. Everything will be cool. And then, you know, because they're worried about their customer rating <laughs> as an Uber rider. Because if you get a low customer rating, drivers don't want to pick you up. <laughs> so it's a yin and yang, you know? And I expect good service, you know? when when if, if I was to order food, I want the food hot. I don't want somebody bringing me cold food. If I, somebody brings me ice cream, I don't want it melted, you know? So all you could do is just do the best you can, in my opinion. Um, there are some people that say, don't go to set neighborhoods. You know, you're going to get tip baited. Prime example, I had a shop and deliver the other day. It was, now in my area, shop and delivers pay a standard fee of $19.50 to shop and deliver. Typically, I could do a shop and deliver in 15, 20 minutes to pick up and maybe another 10, 15 minutes for delivery. So I like it, I, even though it's a little bit less, sometimes I can knock out two in an hour, which is why I like shop and delivers. I don't have to sit and wait for associates. I'd rather just go through the store, grab my stuff, the stuff myself, especially if it's a small order. The other day I took a shop and deliver and I didn't really preview enough in the order. And I noticed as I got going, I was like, holy cow, this is, this is a lot of items. And these were not cheap items. This was chuck roasts and steaks and chicken and ribs and like to the hilt like barbecue sauces and just everything like getting ready for a party like i'm like whoever's doing this they're they're some ballers they're like i'll throw a barbecue it'll be hot dogs burgers and maybe some marinated steaks you know if I get having a big party, but this was so big and so huge, literally, it would have probably been seven, eight hundred dollars worth of groceries, and, and most of that was meat. And I was like, okay. And the delivery drop-off area was to low-income housing. <laughs> it was no contact <laughs> delivery. The house had no screen door on it. It was a beat up. I mean, this this is this was this was government subsidized housing area, and <laughs> I don't know how they were affording all these groceries. But you know what? There was a tip, and then there was no tip afterward. <laughs> so I knew it. As soon as I got to the neighborhood, I was like, <sighs> "But it is what it is. You just do the gig." and hopefully have faith in society that people ain't shady, but there is shady people out there. Um, and I've been not tip baited, but I think better neighborhoods also. Sometimes they have a, a set standard that they think that they should be getting, you know, uh, deliveries. Like I had one lady, it was like, Please don't bring me my groceries in plastic bags. I desire paper bags. 
Walmart doesn't do paper bags. <laughs> and I see this note in the delivery instructions. Like, I'm like, mother fricker. I'm going to get a bad mark from this customer because she's going to be, I requested ba paper bags. <laughs> but it, what, it is what it is. And I wrote a little note. I keep a notepad in my car and I leave notes for customers. And I left a note and I said, so sorry for the inconvenience. Unfortunately, Walmart doesn't care about the environment enough to switch to paper bags yet. Hopefully they do in the future. Have a great day, your driver, John. And I put it in the bag. <laughs> and I, I, you know, leaving notes, you could do it in the app. You can leave it for the customer. Uh, but I don't want that shade thrown on me. You know, it, it's certain people have a set standard. And no matter what in this in gig work, you're not going to meet everybody's standards all the time. It's just not going to happen. And you can't, can't get angry about it. You just got to keep rolling and going. And that's the great thing about multi-apping, guys, is... I, I call, I get two a day, right? I get one whammy, which is just one ridiculous customer or order, just one. And then I do one humanitarian run every day. So if I get more than one whammy, I usually say, I'm done for the day, I'm going home. <laughs> because I gotta have my mind right. I'm not gonna be driving around pissed off or upset about stuff that I don't have no control over. And we don't really, you don't really have a lot of control over the outcome of situations. So, but, and then the humanitarian run is, give you an example. When I drive Uber, sometimes you get a customer and as you're proceeding to the location, they're like, this customer is handicapped and is going to need assistance getting into your vehicle and and storage for their chair. And you're just like, that's a humanitarian run. People need help, right? Uh, I've met a guy who was paralyzed. He, he, half of his body, he could, he could kind of get out of a chair. I had to pretty much pick him up and put him into my vehicle, put his chair, and you got to have compassion for people. And everybody's in a tough place sometimes. So I do, I try to say, all right, just anticipate at least one humanitarian run a day, you know? And then that way, when it happens, you're just like, all right, this is, this is my calling. This is the thing that, you know, I'm here to help others too. And you have to think about it in that way. Because a lot of times there's a lot of people that are in need, especially if you're doing spark delivery. There's a lot of people that are handicapped. I delivered food to a lady that was blind uh they need assistance you know and you know you could be upset about it you could say ah that's not my problem i'm just here to hustle and make money i get it but i believe in karma it goes around comes around so hope you guys get something out of these videos make sure you like subscribe and we'll hit you on the next one